Hello and welcome everyone This is English in the Pocket podcast number one I am Tiagidas, your host in this learning adventure Hello and welcome everyone This is English in the Pocket podcast number one I'm Tiagi Das, your host in this learning adventure. In today's podcast, we're going to be exploring about a few different subjects that my inspired and engaging WhatsApp group have been suggesting lately. But before we delve into it, I would like to share with you some of my personal accounts and some tips about my own English learning process and maybe that will shine some light upon yours. As many of you already know, English language has been in my life for quite some time, since a small child. And later on in life, I had the opportunity to travel for six months all around the USA, hitchhiking all along the West Coast, passing by Idaho Falls, Oregon, Arizona, and San Diego, California, near Mexico's border. There are lots of adventures that I would love to share with you in my future podcasts. In 2002, I decided to leave abroad and got a plane ticket to Portugal. My parents were quite anxious with my decision, but nevertheless, they gave me their full emotional support to carry on with my journey. From Portugal, I went to Italy and then eventually took a flight to England. I didn't have any plans whatsoever before I set foot on my journey, and I wasn't really sure where I would end up arriving. As you may already know, Europe is a very diverse place to be when it comes down to languages, as each country has their own idiom and sometimes several dialects. England sounded as a safe destiny because I knew how to speak English. Well, that's what I thought. Now. Just to give you a broad panorama about my English education, I had been studying in private schools for nearly eight years and had already spent six months traveling throughout North America. But when the plane landed in England, it was a completely new world for me. I realized I could not understand British people's accent and consequently make myself understood. What a shock! It took me about three months to get my listening acquainted to the new way of English speaking, that is, the British way. Now, when you hear someone speaking English with an American accent, and then all of a sudden shift it to the British accent, it is similar to hear someone from Sao Paulo speaking Portuguese, and then you hear someone from Marignan. It may sound as a distinct language altogether, because not only the accent is drastically different, sometimes even some words, expressions, and spelling may also differ. Well, that was my drama. I had been studying English by the books, and there I was, being tested in real-life challenges. Needless to say, I had to reinvent the way I had been used to speak to adjust to my new British reality. When you start learning something new, you need to allow some time for your mind to digest what is going on. Otherwise, there is a great chance you will feel disheartened as soon as the first difficulties show up. Remember my story? Well, I could not afford to come back to Portugal, 
and I had to make it work. If I wanted to stay in England, I would have to merge with people and make myself understood. The first thing I did, and it is the same thing I now advise you to do, is to relax. When we relax, we tend to see things more clearly and somehow in a new light. When we are tense, on the other hand, our mind fills up with unnecessary thoughts, which pretty much block our listening and understanding. Language speaking is just a small fraction of the universe of communication, and perhaps not even the most important. Of course, it is mandatory that you understand the words and how the language you are speaking is articulated. But sometimes you need to think outside the box. So what can you do to understand others and make yourself understood without much language speaking skills? The second thing is quite obvious too. You look to the person's eyes, gestures, body language, and then to their mouth. We human beings tend to do this quite naturally, but sometimes, in the most needed situations, we forget. The reason I said to pay attention to people's body language before their mouth is because the eyes, as well as the body, will transmit their real intention, whereas the mouth will add meaning to it. So if you understand the whole spectrum in which human communication happens, you will be much closer to accomplish fluency. For example, you are walking down Trafalgar Square in London, then all of a sudden someone approaches you and asks for some money. At first, you don't quite understand what that person is saying, but because you are aware of the way he looks, how he is dressing and so on, you can assume quite safely that he is asking for some help. In this situation, Verbal communication is just a confirmation of what your eyes can already perceive. Even if the man hadn't said a word and had just looked at you showing off his empty hands, you would have been able to guess what he wanted. I am aware that it is not always easy to feel relaxed when confronted with new situations, especially if you are in a foreign country, feeling insecure, away from your native cultural reference. But the very fact that you can simply be aware and observe what is going on inside yourself and around you, that alone will already help you to do great progress. My third and final piece of advice is simply to listen again and again. Of course, in real life, you will not be asking people to repeat their sentence over and over again, or you risk they might think you're crazy. This is how you can make a good and intelligent use of my podcast. Listen again and again, until my words start to make sense for you. It may sound oversimplistic, but as you get more and more familiar with my voice, my accent, my expressions and so on, you will be surprised with great revelations.
The mind. Mind, belief, thought, perception. From the book Gifts from a Course in Miracles. There is no limit on your learning because there is no limit on your mind. There is no limit on your learning because there is no limit on your mind. The source of all our experience is mind. The true nature of mind, says this course, is limitless, transcendent awareness and creative power. However, our mistaken thoughts and beliefs, which direct the mind's activity, appear to distort, constrict and fragment it. Consequently, we must change our thoughts and beliefs in order to correct our perception and to restore the mind to its full potential. I would like to play you a song and I am sure you know this one. Come on, sing along with me. Below us, above us only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Aha! Imagine there's no countries, it isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for And no religion to Imagine all the people Living life in peace Ooh You may say I'm a dreamer But I'm not the only Someday you will join us And the world will be as one Imagine no possessions I wonder if you can No need for greed or hunger A brotherhood of man Imagine all the people sharing all the world. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you will join us and the world will be as one You may say I'm a dreamer But I'm not the only one I hope someday you will join us And the world will be as one And the world will be as one and the world will be as one. We're coming to the end of this first podcast, English in the Pocket. My name is Tiago Daz, your host in this learning adventure. And I'd like to thank you for having joined me today. I really appreciate your comments. So 
feel free to share your ideas, your insights, and what subjects are you really interested in, so we may talk about it in the next podcast. Bye-bye, so long, everyone!